Welcome to the HTML5 Dev channel. In this video, I show transactional form creation using Gravity Forms, PayPal feed setup with PayPal standard add-on, connect IPN with a PayPal sandbox account, and Gravity logging setup for debugging. Let's get started. All right, we have a fresh new install of WordPress here on the right side and the back end right here is exact same site and if you look at here it is set up with https which is very important when you are handling transaction with paypal or paypal sandbox and let's go see what kind of plugins we already have okay so gravity forms is already installed and this duplicator is just so that i can back up stuff i kept it pretty clean so that we can focus on the task at hand. First, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go here, form and add-ons. Our target is to get the standard PayPal add-on installed. Here we go, this is the one. Let's install, activate. All right, so now we have Gravity Forms and Gravity Forms PayPal add-on installed. Next, we will go create a basic form let's add new paypal sandbox test one create all right so here we'll go very simple because our target is to cover the functionalities and the steps involved to connect to paypal sandbox and perform a transaction so we're not going to complicate things with a complicated form so let's just do a name and let's go with the product and total and even in the product at this point we don't really need the uh, quantity field because we're going to keep it pretty basic disable quantity field and let's set it up as a five dollar transaction update all right so now we have our form ready now to see this uh, form in action we have to create a page and use the short code before I do, let me just show you one thing here. I just always add this extra plugin, Classic Editor, because Gutenberg, in my opinion and experience, is not up to par when it comes to doing professional work. I mean, it's still very buggy. That's why I try to avoid it. So. That's why I got this classic editor installed. So now let's go create a page normally. Add new. Let's name it Gravity Sandbox Text. Publish. Add the form. Insert. Update. Now let's refresh and go to the menu, find that page, boom. Now our form is ready to go. Now the next step would be to connect this form with the uh, PayPal sandbox. And to do that, we have to create the PayPal feed and, and collect information on our sandbox account. So let's go do that. All right, I'm logged in here in my PayPal sandbox account. And if you want to know the details of how to create and log in, please refer to the previous video of this series where I show how to create this sandbox account and use it. So usually they give us two accounts. We're going to be focusing on this business account because this is the one we will use to set up the PayPal feed for the business account or basically who will receive the payment 
and then when we create the purchase test the transaction we will use this personal account so let's go look at the details here all right so keeping this in mind let's go this is our form and we will go to PayPal and here we will create a PayPal feed for our form let's just keep it at that PayPal feed one and since we're using the sandbox we'll go with the test and this is where this email address should go this is how we are connecting our account to the sandbox and for for now we're going to go with just a product and services as we know we have three different ones and on the next video we will go over the difference between the two using a multi-page form and conditional logic but for now let's keep it simple all right so let's make it bigger a little bit so we will keep this form total as the payment amount as we declared here this total right here and keep pretty much everything as is since we don't have all these other fields we're not going to worry about it too much we have first and last name we're just keeping it simple this is where the uh, conditional logic goes that we will cover in a future video but for now we're keeping it very very simple and let's update the settings all right so now we have established a feed which connects to our business account over at the sandbox and now let's go set up the IPN access which is connecting this site with instant PayPal message to do that we have to go to the general settings and come to PayPal and we just confirm this update settings now as soon as we do the PayPal add-on gives us this URL and this is something we have to set up in our account here to do that let's go to the sandbox okay so as you can see this is sandbox.paypal.com here we will log in using these credentials so let's go in okay so we are here this is the business account where we were gonna receive the money like as you can see we have gone through some testing before now to set up the IPN we have to go account settings and then notification update as you can see I actually had uh, something else before so we're gonna go ahead and edit that settings and if you don't have anything you will you might find uh, you have to enable it because you, usually the default is set to this one disabled but when you enable it you click here and then take this URL that the PayPal add-on just gave us and put it right in here receive IPN save now this site right here is connected to the sandbox through the IPN that the PayPal add-on just asked for us so now if we do any transaction PayPal through this URL will let us know the uh, instant payment notification IPN at this point we are ready to test our form before we perform a transaction 
I wanted to set up the logging, which is which can be used for uh, debugging purposes. So I came to settings and go all the way here. As you can see, by default, the logging is turned off. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on, save it. And as soon as we do, we see this logging tab shows up. So click on it. And now we can see the Gravity Forms API, the Core API, and the PayPal standard add-on. Everything is here. Just to start fresh, let's delete this log. So everything is empty. So as soon as uh, we finish our transaction, things will start showing up here. And one small change I wanted to make since uh, in this, we already performed a whole bunch of uh, $5 transactions. So to stand out, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, change this to, let's say, 25. Update. Now let's go back to our form, refresh. All right, now we have a $25 transaction set or price. Now let's just use AAA last name BBB and submit all right so we are at the $25 transaction here and this time we're going to use this personal account use this email and this password. Now let's log in. All right. So right now we are ready to pay. So let's pay now. And we have a successful transaction right here. Now let's also look into this is the merchant account or the business account. So let's uh, refresh to make sure that we have a successful transaction and right here this is our transaction of this now let's go to our site and we have a thank you message here in a future video we will set up a redirection to any page like a custom page we will build but for now this is good enough and now we can look at the back end and let's this is our logging so let's see as you can see we have a core one available and a paypal standard add-on log available so let's look into this guy here this is showing the whole transaction details here And this one showing the details from the add-ons perspective for example this is the form entries all the details as you can see our name first name last name pricing etc and here we see some of the responses like transaction ID, uh, the messages saying the it's ready to fulfill, the type of method, etc. These debug logs we can use to troubleshoot the whole process of this transaction, and we can actually use some of these items to find out what these variable values are but the thing is as you can see a payment amount method etc the all these information that the default debug log, log shows us is are empty a lot of information is missing and it gives you uh, some of the fulfillment related information uh, here that we cannot really use afterwards so in a next video we will focus on how to collect this information, these variables, and how to use them to our benefit using gravity forms, hooks, and filters that we can use in, inside our function file to manipulate 
the results or to use for some other purposes after a transaction is successful. So that's all for this video. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.